Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome at this Tech Academy event. Uh, my name is Wouter van Geluwe. I'm Adobe's CTO in Western Europe, and I'll be hosting this event today uh, together with my colleague Victor de la Iglesia, who's based in Spain. He's one of our uh, top uh, CGA analytics experts uh, globally, and he'll be taking you through this session uh, today. Um, this Tech Academy session is part of a broader program in which we have had multiple sessions already this year on topics like segment match, uh, same page and next page personalization, uh, and so on. Um, and we also have a couple of sessions in the next uh, months, um, of which uh, one of them is this uh, server-side data collection and personalization session, which actually should not be on September 6th, but instead it's October 4th. Um, so that's when uh, you'll be able to view um, how we are handling server-side data, data collection and personalization as well. Um, you'll be receiving this invitation to join a session as part of the post-event follow-up. Um, today's session is going to be recorded and the recording will be posted on our YouTube channel. I will post the link in the chat pod in a minute. Uh, but on this YouTube channel, you'll be able to find uh, many recordings of all Tech Academy sessions, but also uh, many other uh, demonstrations and presentations and so on. So feel free to check it out. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Victor, who can kick off the session. Victor. Cool. Thank you. Just to check with you that everything should go with my sound. So yes, you. I can hear you. Perfecto. OK, so thanks, everyone, to be here today. Um, we're going to talk today about analytics, which is one of my favorite topics ever. Uh, and I guess for you guys as well, because whenever I talk to companies, the first uh, password that came everywhere, every time in, in every single meeting is uh, data driven, right? Um, we all, all want to be data, data driven companies. And that's why uh, when we talk internally also in, in Adobe, we always uh, say that today everyone is um, able to look at the data. And that's a reality. Thanks to the different technologies, that especially the dashboards uh, technologies, we are able to make everyone in the company able to access the data in different ways, right? To, at the end, take decisions. But um, just like Valter is scared about the name of campaign, I'm really scared about this uh, look at the data sentence. Because this, in every company, means, um, in reality, uh, reporting, right? And reporting is just, uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys are watching now uh, nowadays the, the new series of the Lord of the Rings. And this is basically Mordor, I'm sorry. And we, as businesses, we need to make sure that we avoid reporting. I mean, we need to do reporting because we need to uh, make everyone know about how the business is performing, right? If the KPIs are going up or going down. But really what we need to make um, more accessible is the analysis part of the technology or the skills of the people. And the reality is that when we look at uh, different companies, um, we are seeing that not everyone can really analyze the data. Sometimes it's because of the skills, but that's not really the reality. And it's more about the technology, especially when, when we talk about different channels and when we combine online and offline data, is when everything gets more messy. And the reality of the business is that um, when they want to really improve their strategies, especially the experience strategies or the customer experience strategies, this part of this sentence is the most important. Because here is when we uh, start doing the most important thing of uh, the analytics side of the data, which is finding insights, which at the end, insights are really the opportunities that are going to give us uh, the chance to really improve the strategy, to change maybe the budget of the advertising campaign, to change something on the um, call center, to really move the website into another direction, and at the end, guide the customer to go to what we want and also uh, where they want to go as well. Um, and really, the part of insight, the most important part of the insight, is not just uh, to find the opportunity, but also to be able to actionate that opportunity. Because if we find um, something really nice on the data, it can be really nice, but not really 
uh, important for the business or uh, in other words not actually able to make that change on that budget or change that part of the website so really when we are doing analysis and we find that opportunity or that uh, insight um, the insight is all about a segment right it's a group of people that are doing uh, behavior in a uh, maybe in a positive way or a negative way. And, when, and what we want as a marketeers of business people is to maybe send an email, uh, send a Facebook campaign, or maybe do an A-B test on Adobe Target to change anything on the site. And of course, more strategies that, that we can talk about, but the reality is how we convert um, the data into insights and then into actions is the um, goal that we're gonna talk today. Basically, that goal is um, translated into technology is what we um, built in terms of uh, application on top of Adobe Experience platform, which is customer journey analytics. And maybe you are aware of when we talk in different webinars and different uh, presentations, we talk about CJA. Um, and this solution is uh, basically trying to achieve that find insights, but not just from the digital analytics world or the web or the app, but also to bring more channels like the call center, like the CRM, like the uh, data from a marketing automation tool, data from a chatbot, data from anywhere in the enterprise. And with that, we are able basically to really join all the data together to really do a journey analysis, not just business analysis and not just and uh, uh, digital analytics uh, analysis. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an example of a customer journey, and just to present the, the, the real challenge of what we are seeing in different companies. And this can be the, the typical journey, right? Uh, from starting the mobile, move to the website, and to the point of sale in the offline world, then maybe purchase online or maybe offline, and we always contact support because we didn't like how the service was in terms of uh, the shipping, for example. Um, and the reality is that when as experienced um, teams or customer experience teams or uh, whatever teams, uh, when they look at the data, the problem is that that data is really also isolated. So every single channel has its own dashboard tool, its own um, data structure, and we are not able to connect the dots and try to understand the full path of the user to really understand where we need to activate in terms of uh, changes, where I need to change the strategy, where I need to improve, where I need to keep doing the same things. And uh, part of that customer journey cycle is to be able to analyze it in every single movement that the user does. So, so the reality when we look at the journey in terms of analytics, what we need to aim for is really um, look at the data uh, on the mobile and see how that user moves to the desktop and then how that user ends up on the physical world to really contact the a salesperson maybe and then put sales back online and then contact a support. So all of these steps needs to be needs to be analyzed. Uh, otherwise we are we are losing uh, chances of finding new insights that can improve uh, not just the customer experience but also our KPIs. So we don't stack on just looking at the data, but also taking care of the learning part of the data, meaning finding insights that we can transform into actions. So how um, customer journey um, analytics um, does this and where in the Adobe Experience Cloud um, is it? Because in these Tech Academy sessions, what we are doing is basically talking all the time about Adobe Experience Platform, which is our uh, platform of data and content that will uh, give us the possibility to, uh, at the very beginning, bump the data from different data sources, from online and offline, and basically try to um, create a view of the profile that can be activated in real time. So that's the part of what we're talking of, the real-time customer profile that in several sessions we've been talking about. And in here, the main um, thing that we're doing is basically create segments that can be um, populated in different destinations, as well as taking decisions in more orchestrated way, more one-to-one. -one. And so like that, I can basically send those segments to um, the right tools of activation. 
Some of the, those tools are part of Adobe, some of those tools are outside, or they are basically native from Adobe Experience Platform. In any case, all the data that arrives to the customer profile is always landing on a part of Adobe Experience Platform that we um, basically call it Data Lake because actually it's a data lake from the Azure technology. And there is where we can um, do a lot of analytics operations. Analytics operations can be, of course, send that data to ABI tool, like, for example, Microsoft Word BI, thanks to the integration with, for example, Query Service, which is a solution that allows us not just to connect to BI solutions like Tableau or Power BI, but also this solution allows us to transform the data, to clean the data, to cleanse the data so we can have a nice data ready for activation in the profile, but as well uh, into the um, uh, into the data lake. So uh, once we um, have all of this data lake on the on the Adobe Spins platform, we can start doing uh, other analytics um, operations or tasks like the small machine learning as well using the customer AI, which is another part of Adobe Spins platform. Um, but one of the solutions that is built on top of that, that data lake and to take data from, from it is what we are uh, calling, sorry, uh, customer journey analytics. And so um, it's not working on top of that real-time customer profile, it's working on top of data lake because there is where I have all of these data sets um, in separated ways, so then I can have the view I want for the analytics side. So basically, Journey Analytics picks the data, the data I want, because maybe I want only web and mobile together, or web, mobile, and call center together. And so I start building a data view that will allow me to create the dashboards as I want. When we think about journey analytics, and I'm gonna show you, um, let me see if I can remove this here, voila. Um, this is customer journey analytics in terms of user interface. You can see for the people that you are uh, familiar with Adobe Analytics, that is actually the same interface, but the difference is that we are changing the backend. So the backend is a new way of doing things, which is, um, reading directly from the platform. And we are reusing the elements we build for the CDP use cases in the more CDP analytical use cases. So in here, I'm able basically to, as you are seeing here, uh, to create any dashboard to look at the data, but at the same time, I can interact now with omnichannel data. As you can see here, there is channels from digital and also um, channels from the offline world. And now I can do the same as we do in, um, in Adobe Analytics, which is just pick the dimensions and drag and drop on top of the variables. I can now bring different metrics as well on top of the uh, solution to basically start creating my analysis. And of course, we can always use the different attribution models that we always had uh, inside of Adobe Analytics, but now uh, on top of Adobe Experience Platform. So we can really uh, do analysis in, in another level. So um, apart from the typical um, tables that we used to do in Adobe Analytics, we can still work with the different uh, analysis flows, the cohort analysis, and the panels. But again, as we were um, talking about uh, before, um, now with the data enterprise, meaning all type of data, not only web analytics data but keeping the same user-friendly interface so we are uh, democratizing the way of um, doing analysis uh, with all this data together. So to get to a, um, a little bit more detail of how everything works in terms of journey analytics, let me just um, show you if this works. Give me one second, voila. Um, so here is a representation of maybe the, um, the data sets, the tables of data that we have in Adobe Experience Platform. We can have, for example, the website, we can have the mobile, we can have uh, maybe the call center, and a little bit of CRM. Of course, we can have more 
um, data sets um, depending on, on the company, but I, this is just uh, as an example. So what we want, as we are doing as well in the real-time customer profile, here what I want is just to basically join all these data sets so I can create the view of the customer and start doing that uh, beautiful analysis that we were talking before, where everything gets um, connected in here. So coming back to the data sets, what we want here to do is basically to find an identity that allows us to really find out that the user is on every single data set. So when we think about identities, we can go to, for example, the profile, my profile that you're seeing here, and all of these are the identities that we have in Adobe Experience Platform. All of these are uh, ready to be used in Journey Analytics, but we need to make sure that the ones that we are using are the ones that are in every single um, data set. Otherwise, there will be uh, no join in, in, those, um, um, in those data sets. So for that, what we're doing is basically in every single data set, we will have maybe one or two or three identities, but we can select the one that we know that is the same in every single data set. Typically, in every company, we usually have, um, for example, the customer ID, which is an ID created by you guys in the, in the enterprise to really understand that that user is in every single data set. But the complication of that is that when there is um, timestamp events uh, like the mobile or the web or the call center, we also need to do multiple joins together with, with the, um, with the timestamp events. And so all of this is um, already done by uh, Journey Analytics in just three or four clicks to, to build that uh, connection. We can have that um, directly um, join kind of a stitching, but also there is um, another uh, feature called cross-channel analytics that uh, gives you the possibility to select, of course, that customer ID, which is the ID that we know the user when the user logs in, when the user performs an interaction on a um, login area, like the call center, like the login area, like the CRM, like the marketing automation, we know that user is person. But we know that in environments more uh, complicated like web and mobile, we have uh, anonymous users. And we want to also understand the same that we are doing here in the um, journey process. Maybe in here, the user was at the very beginning of one of the sessions, Logged out, it was uh, unknown. So I want really to do also a join with uh, unknown users and to, to basically do the analysis use case of cross device analytics, or in this case, understand from the unknown to known uh, stitching. So in this case, we can also select another uh, identity, which is basically the experience cloud ID and it's going to give us the possibility to start analyzing unknown users. And as soon as they log in or they have um, the, 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 the customer ID identity, it can be the email, it can be whatever identity you want, then um, everything will be stitched and you can have that cross-channel view. So from the very unknown to known, and then going backwards to understand what the user did before even the, the login. So that's the way it works in terms of uh, analytics. Again, if you have any questions, please put it on the chat. Uh, we'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So um, with this, um, basically, uh, we will um, send all of this data to um, a data view where we will do the magic. And that magic is where we are going to do the best demo ever, of course where we are going to present you actually three things, like really three small things, but I think really um, important things from the solution that will show you the power of the journey analytics to answer that uh, analysis piece that we uh, highlighted on at the very beginning of the presentation. Um, and so we are going to cover, as we were saying, three things. First of all, we are going to present what the data view is and how it's going to help you. Um, second, uh, we're going to show you the, the new release that we did at the very beginning of the summer, which is the new flow visualization uh, that is also available in Adobe Analytics, but has more power in journal analytics thanks to the different data sets that we will have from the enterprise, online and offline. 
And finally, we will show you how we can activate the decisions, which is at the end what we wanted to do the actionable insights. So the audience publishing is a new release that we did, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's generally available and everyone can use it now. So it's quite, quite uh, good. But to start with the demo, I wanted to show you that connection part of the, of the solution. So every time we want to join data, and data is every single data that we have uh, in Adobe Experience platform. So here is Adobe Experience platform. And inside of the data lake, we can access to all the data sets that we have, all the tables that we have from online and offline, to then create those profiles for the CDP use cases. But as we were saying before, we can use those data sets to create maybe different uh, machine learning models that we have out of the box, or even just uh, clean the data as we want by using query service. So you, here you can do whatever you want with SQL and try to uh, cleanse or manipulate the data in the way you want. But another way is basically access those data sets through customer journey analytics, which is the interface you are seeing now on the screen. So here, uh, when we access, for example, this connection from Walter, um, I'm going to be able to uh, see different data sets that are together to basically create that view of that customer journey. So we can then do the analysis part. When we access the, the interface, the, the possibility that gave us is to understand what data is uh, coming to journey analytics, because as we were seeing before on the architecture, the data, let me go back to the architecture, um, all the data that um, gets into the platform basically um, is copied into journey analytics. Why is copied and why is not just doing SQL every time? just for performance. If you want to keep the same speed that we used to have in Adobe Analytics, in Journey Analytics now with even more data, because you are not only have, um, you are not only having um, CR, I mean, digital analytics data, you are gonna have a call center, CRM, marketing automation. That's why Adobe Analytics brings the data and transforms and performs some manipulations to make the data as fast as possible. For the BI people, usually we normally do a, like a layer to make the, the data more cached or more uh, ready for build uh, the dashboard. So it's kind of the same, but even more uh, powerful because it's a, a cloud-based solution. So in here, what we're doing is um, I'm going to show you the, the connection that we're going to use for the demo. And in here, what we're uh, doing is joining um, data from the, um, from the call center, data from mobile and web, and also data from a uh, um, um, voice assistant um, application that we've built. So if we access one of the, um, the data sets, what you can see is the identity that we are choosing to join the data. So this is what we're talking um, in the whiteboard here. So we are gonna come back to the whiteboard and to the table slide. So all of these uh, identities that we are selecting are basically in the connection uh, this. So in here, any single identity that you have defined on that data set can be used for um, the stitching part. Again, you need to select the one that you know that is going to be everywhere. Otherwise, you can also use the uh, cross-channel uh, feature that I show you that you can choose um, a customer uh, ID, like the one we're using, email, plus the Experience Cloud ID, which is the anonymous ID. And when I say Experience Cloud ID, it can also be the Google Analytics ID, because you are not depending on having Adobe Analytics to use this solution. You can capture the data we've seen in different Arctic academies before directly with the web SDK or mobile SDK without Adobe Analytics. You can also bring the data from Google Analytics, or you can also bring the data from Adobe Analytics. So you choose the ID that you need. You do the same on every single data set. And once you're ready, um, you can see a preview of how the data is behaving, and then you move to the data view. The data view for the people that knows, um, so in the case of Adobe Analytics, it would be like the report suite, kind of. And for the, um, how do you say in, I don't remember, the virtual report suite is like the data view, okay? So this is how we um, organize the data because from the web data set 
the call center, and maybe the voice data set, maybe I don't, I don't want every single metric and every single variable that I have there. So that's why here you have the possibility to just select from the experience uh, data model, which is the model that we typically use in Adobe Experience platform. We can access um, all the data that is there, the event data and the profile data. You can also have non timestamp data. And in here, you just drag and drop the different variables. Like, for example, if I want to bring the name of the page, I can just add it here because it's added. I'm not going to uh, add it. Uh, but you can basically um, add variables to the data view. So then I can start uh, building that beautiful dashboard and start doing the analysis part of the, the process of, of uh, customer journey analysis. OK, so with that, a little bit of an overview of customer journey analytics. And now we're going to get into those three features that I think are really fun and are, are just a representative way of how customer journey analytics can give you more power in your daily basis in terms of uh, analysis. So um, let's move to a blank um, workspace. So in here, uh, what you can do is basically use any single visualization that we used to have in Adobe Analytics. And imagine if you have Google Analytics data in here, you can perform uh, the same analysis uh, that you are doing in Adobe Analytics, but now with Google Analytics. But even now that we have, again, more data, different data, we can start doing bigger analysis uh, that we are normally used to. So in here, we are going to start with a freeform table, just to give you the first example of how and why to use the data view, the component that we were just seeing before. So typically, and it happened to me many times when before Adobe, I used to work for a bank, and usually, we used to have the, the events track under the page names. Don't tell me why, but sometimes it happens in every single company that you are tracking with an old tagging plan or because you are used to that. Um, and maybe if you want to check how the users are performing against the KPI, like the second part of the checkout, then the simple way to do that is just to, for example, let me bring uh, the page name and see what we can have here. Uh, to become uh, an event, maybe the call star can be our objective. So can, how can we do that? So the simple way to make this a conversion is just to create a metric. So creating a calculated metric is as simple as drag and drop the page name uh, plus the event. So we can count only the events for um, the, the, the call center page. And that's as simple as that, I will create my conversion. But what is the problem of that? The problem is that if I create that um, metric, I won't be able to use it, for example, in visualizations like the flow analysis or the cohort analysis or different uh, panels that we have available in uh, journey analytics. And for example, if I want to then use um, maybe the attribution model by just clicking on the right side and change the attribution model to whatever I want, then uh, it won't be possible. I need to get back to the calculate metric, change the attribution, then it gets, um, I mean, the time to insight gets more slower, right? So in order to do all this scheme and make everyone be able to have that metric as a main goal or main KPI so they can start their analysis, we can actually access from um, the panel directly the data view that we are using because I want to convert that string dimension in a uh, metric or conversion metric. So as simple as accessing, again, the components, um, I want to create that uh, call center. As you can hear, there is no call, I hope there is no call center metric. OK, these are the components metrics that we can have. So what I'm going to do is transform that string from a page name into a conversion. So let me access the web um, property. Uh, web page details, and then I'm going to bring the page name. Of course, I want to make it more user friendly, so I'm going to call it uh, call start. This is, this is how it was named. I'm going to remove all of this description because it's not correct. And then I'm going to move to this part of the um, UI. So in here, in every single component, it will change depending if it's a string, a Boolean, or there is a numeric or there's a string or whatever. Uh, there will be different um, features available here for every single kind of data. And then you can 
they are on a little bit on data preparation. So in this case, I only want to count call center events. So just copy the name, and then now I'm gonna set. So I have ready my um, calculating metric, but ready for uh, using anything, also in a little bit. So um, with this, I'm gonna bring all the historical data because it's already on the repository, which we call it connection in customer journey analytics. And at the same time, we're gonna be able to uh, put it everywhere. So just to show you in a flip from table, now we can access that specific metric that I can see how many times it's performed, then uh, put it in here and do some analysis. Right, so it's as simple as doing that. But this, again, is as simple as doing a calculated metric. So I'm gonna show you the second feature that I wanted to show you, the new flow visualization. And for that example, we are gonna use that metric, which is the most interesting thing. So moving to that second uh, part of the demo, best demo ever, as we were seeing, um, the flow visualization, and now we're gonna uh, do the analysis. So flow visualization for me, at the very beginning of my career of analyst, uh, or behavior paths are always like, and I remember Abina Skousik saying, behavior paths are just, um, they, they don't give you insights. But I think it's wrong because that sentence was from an old technology. And typically in, in, in solutions like, like Google or others, they, they have that challenge that you cannot really get to the uh, point of really solving that problem of, of flow analysis. But in here, we have the possibility not just to, and I'm going to give you the example of, uh, as we are used to, like we could put a page name and go backwards in time to understand from that exit uh, page, I can go backwards and see, okay, what happens before that specific page. But now I have my KPIs and I want to analyze towards that goal and what happens also after that goal on that KPI. So to do that, I have the possibility now to access the metrics and now my new um, calculate metric called star that I created from the data view. And I can then put it on the uh, flow visualization and start understanding what happened before that. And remember that this is an offline event. Happens on the, I mean, it's kind of offline because you call the, the mobile and so on. But anyway, um, but you call the call center and you want to understand from which pages the user came, right? And so to do that, I can only just click on the page name and I will be able to uh, see maybe two or three um, layers of events and see what happened before. So in here, um, what you can see is not the exit, but the calls uh, start. So I can see from where the people uh, basically start the, the call center. And I can really understand the different um, pages that were before that call start event. This is an offline event, this is an online event, and then Depending on the data that I have, I can add more stuff here. I can add, for example, the, uh, the product name. I can add, um, I don't know, the chat interaction. I can add the, the channel that they did before, and so on and so forth. So I can really transform the data in the way I want. Uh, there's many um, tips and tricks from, from this um, flow visualization, but I'm sure I, I won't be able to be uh, quick in this, so uh, we can spend one hour on, on just flow visualization. But I give you one uh, that I really love, because here you can have as many paths as you can see, like in this case, there's five more, four more. Um, and just for the sake of being more simple, I'm going to just look for um, Samsung products in this case, because it's a telco uh, fake uh, demo data environment. So in this case, I can just right click and say, let me just filter the column to find some, I hope I write it good, uh, products. It's gonna filter the paths to focus only on the ones I want because for some reason I detected something bad there. So with this, I can just filter the column and focus on the ones I want. And again, once you're doing analysis, and that's the most important thing from analysis that is that you have a question and you want the answers uh, to get really fast, right? And so I want to keep going on that analysis and I just can right click and create again a filter. A filter in journey analytics is that it's the same as segment in, um, in Adobe Analytics. We change the name because I'll show you the, the next uh, feature, the audience publishing. And just for the sake of being more clear with the with you guys, uh, we change the, that filter because also the way it works in the backend is different. 
So in here, I'm just selecting um, lost users, for example. And let me save it. And now from that right click from a visualization, I just created a segment that then I can go backwards and be more granular in terms of, in terms of my analysis. So now I can just drag and then drop it here, put some events that I want, put says, blah, 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 anything that I want to start building that analysis. And then as we were doing always, we can drag and drop stuff and start doing um, the typical analysis of uh, answer, uh, asking questions and getting those answers on the fly by just dragging and drop stuff on the canvas. So that's good. We've covered uh, the two, the data view, so how we can create a metric from scratch using a string, so transform and do that data preparation. We've been using the new flow visualization, which is, I mean, just incredible, the things that you can get, because we just analyze start, called start, but you can do analysis like, for example, uh, first step of the checkout and then get backwards to understand the, the path to conversion that they are doing, even the, the conversion of um, the purchase or, or the sign up of a mortgage or whatever. Um, and now what I want to, um, to show you is that the capability of making an action on the data. Because okay. until here, we, as we were seeing here, we found a group of users that got lost. And what we want is to do a campaign. It can be a personalization on another target, on the website, on your own personalization tool. It can be a Facebook campaign, it can be whatever. And we just found the users. So why don't we are able to actually use um, the different destinations that we have already built in the platform. Because we have that, we have that capability of different connectors that we send segments from Adobe Experience platform to those destinations so I can achieve my uh, strategy goals. Same as the destinations, we know that we are able to also perform different journey uh, strategies uh, using the orchestration piece of Adobe Experience platform, or as we call it, Adobe Journey Optimizer. And here we can build different journeys uh, using the, uh, those segments that typically are part of Adobe Experience platform. So when we are back to the architecture and we think about the whole journey analytics works um, on the, um, the architecture, we not only are able to um, pick data and analyze the data, but now we are also able to send segments to a real-time customer profile so we can keep on the activation uh, so, and this is for me just the best thing that ever happens to this solution. Uh, I'm going to show you as well on the demo. So now that we have this analysis, we found out that these uh, users, um, these 14 users, let me just right click and a new um, part of the menu of the right click, which is at the end the best tool ever in, in analysis workspace. We're going to click it and open a new interface. So this new interface, allows us to basically create that audience that's going to be published to the real-time uh, customer profile and ready for activation. In here, you have different parts of the UI. One part, which is other segments that typically we use in, in analysis workspace, like the one we've created. We can also have, for example, non purchases so I can do, just be sure that those users are lost and they didn't purchase. So I can add some uh, filters as well on top of the main segmentation that, that we select from the workspace. And then here we just put the names that we want. So in this case, I'm gonna put CJ, Tech, uh, sorry, I'm the keyword so far, Academy, uh, demo segment. Uh, voila, and then we can add tags, we can add descriptions, um, and that's it. And once we have all of these, we can select how many times that uh, segment needs to be refreshed. Because in this case, we only want those specific users we can use one time. But we are able to choose different ways of refreshing the audience. Every four hours, daily, weekly, monthly, depending on the strategy, we will see um, if we want to keep that audience to be refreshed. In this case, I just want to pick one bucket of users and do um, a campaign. Part of doing strategies is also knowing the audience. And we have developed a patent um, machine learning model to detect if those users will come back to the site. And I promise that 
I'm sure half of the audience here, if I tell you how many times you created a segment, you push it to target, and then nobody uh, got into the personalization, is because maybe they are super lost users that they will never come back to this. So a way to detect that is using this small um, scorecard here. You see, this is the amount of people that we have in the segment, and this is the amount of people that will come back on next seven days. I can get to two weeks and next month for, for the moment, for these weeks. And then I can check if they're going to come back. I want to tell you uh, that I'm sure there's no one to come back anyone. So if we think about our business strategy, it's not going to be uh, pushing a, this segment to target because for sure we are not going to find them at least on the next month or next two weeks or seven days. So what is going to be the strategy? The strategy can be maybe Facebook, maybe an email, maybe an SMS, whatever is outbound, not inbound. We, we know that the user is not going to come back to the site. Um, just to show you, I think I have one with some data just to show you that uh, it's not fake. Uh, I think I have one here, yeah. Um, so you can see here that um, this is another different audience with um, almost 8,000 uh, people on the segment. And we know that from those people, only 28 will come back on the next two weeks. And if we check next month, it will be uh, 300. So that's you know, a good in, in, in indication that we can actually keep on doing that strategy on, on, on the personalization side. So from the... Um, from the square, from the um, sorry, from the square, um, from the square. So I, I, I lost the, the name. Basically, we can also uh, select the different KPIs uh, that we want to check, because like this, we can actually you know be more present in terms of okay, what codes we need to um, activate or what touch because we want to improve whatever with the strategy. So here you can check the amount of sessions, the amount of people, the amount of uh, revenue that they're spending, the amount of pages, whatever metric you have in your data view, it will be available here to be used uh, to do as a simple analysis quickly just before doing the publishing. Uh, you can actually access uh, the different IDs that are here. Does not happen to have anything? Let me show you here. Um, you can access even the every single ID that is part of the segment. So maybe you can go backwards in the real cost, uh, customer profile and do some kind of analysis to do some validations. Um, we give you tools, you use it as you want. Um, and finally, uh, we are back to the segment that we were creating and we are gonna publish. So by publishing this segment, uh, it will be available in, in seconds in the Adobe Experience platform. And then uh, every four hours will be refreshed. Uh, well, in this case, one time. So um, more or less in four hours, the data will be ready on the real time customer profile, so then I can activate. Um, we can actually go to components and also see the different audiences that we have created and then they are pushed and see also the audience size for every single one. We can anytime stop uh, pushing that segment if maybe it's a refresh segment and then the data won't flow um, through or to the real time customer profile. So, Again, more tools to, to be used depending on how you want to um, tackle. So now let me go back to the segmentation service of Adobe Experience Platform, because now what we want, of course, is to um, publish that segment to the different areas uh, or different destinations. We know that that segment is not going to come back, so I might use maybe the Facebook or LinkedIn or maybe the email marketing uh, tools that we have. In this case, um, to uh, be more clean, the segments are not already populated, which I think is really interesting because the idea of having um, the, the audience publishing is to make sure that the analysts are just sending ideas to the activation people or activation team. Uh, but not all of the segments that the analyst team is creating are maybe going to be pushed. It's just I push their ideas and then the activation team choose the ideas whenever they want. So that's why we have those segments available inside of the segment builder. So in here, as you remember from other sessions, we have the attributes, the events that we are collecting, and also audiences. Audiences that are coming from the audiences that we have already created in Adobe Experience Platform, but also uh, the audiences that are uh, coming from, um, um, from customer journey analytics. In this case, 
this is the segment that we are gonna uh, use to be activated on Facebook. But just for the sake of showing you, once we add the uh, the audience to to the um, um, to the canvas, we can also check the unread press to see how many people we have. Um, this is a segment that I published yesterday, and that's why I have uh, available the to repress and see that the numbers match. And I can promise you that for the first time, the numbers match between two uh, tools. So it's quite quite good. Um, so now what we are what we're gonna do is just to create or use that segment that we just created in uh, customer journey analytics. We're gonna give a name like Tech Academy CGA demo segment, for example. We're going to save the description, and now we are going to save. So that segment is now available for our strategies. I can use it in Journey Optimizer. I can push it to a destination. I can consume, save and close, sorry. I can consume it through the API. I can do whatever I want with that segment. It's now part of the rules uh, inside of the custom profile. So I'm ready to qualify users, of course. As we were, told, uh, we were saying before, the address will be populated for the first time in four hours. I think it's four hours. Uh, if not, look at in the documentation. <laughs> um, so now that we have the segment, uh, just a little bit of use cases, because of course, this kind of segment, um, if we think about it, we can um, actually more or less do the creation of that segment in here. The users who did that and that and then that. Um, but the opportunity that we have with Journey Analytics is that we can, from the data visualization, create segments. So we are sure that that amount of people is going to get into that segment coming from a specific behavior. But you know that from Journey Analytics um, workspace, you can create a calculate metrics, you can do attribution, you can do many stuff. Those things are things that you cannot um, do in, in the segment builder today in, in the real customer profile. So, in terms of segmentation, it gives you more power tools to create more advanced use cases in terms of segmentation. So it's not everything can be done in your analytics, so you can both uh, use both solutions in, in the sense of segment creation. And as we were saying before, um, one of my colleagues told me once, it's also an opportunity to the analyst team to create ideas, as we were saying before. So again, once I have that segment, uh, sorry, I forget where, where am I? Uh, Segment, voila. So let me go and see that the segment is here, Tech Academy. And then the thing that we're going to do now is go to destinations, and I'm going to publish that segment into um, Facebook. Okay, so it will be up here, uh, first one here. Go backwards to, sorry, here. Uh, and we are going to go to destinations and find the Facebook one, Facebook, voila. And I'm gonna activate the segment. So the destination is already configured uh, to that um, Facebook manager or Meta, I don't know who it's called now, Meta or Facebook manager. Um, we're gonna uh, access the destination and we're gonna find our um, segment that is not yet published. I'm gonna select it. And this is just the, the typical workflow of, of the UI of um, the destination. Here I'm gonna I can select any single identity in this case to be in the, to do the integration I'm gonna use the email hash. As you remember, uh, we were coming from an email normal email identity on the uh, customer journey analytics connection, and now thanks to the real time custom driver profile stitching using uh, that stitching, I can select any identity to be published to um, to the destination. So this is really an advantage because if that segment I want to publish, for example, to Salesforce Mar Marketing Cloud. Salesforce Marketing Cloud is going to ask me for the subscriber key or the content key. And so then I can just from that stitching, I can select the right identity, not just the one we were using in customer journal analytics. And that's just amazing. Well, anyway, um, let's uh, keep um, on the demo. And then here is just a way of saying, OK, the data is only coming from me, from customer, and then I'm going to publish. Here I can check the consents, I can check the, the data lineage in terms of data, and then just finish. I hope the segment is going to be published. And then I can show you that that segment coming from Journey Analytics is then um, available in Facebook, in, in just as you can see in three, four uh, clicks. Maybe there, are, there were more, but yeah, right, in clicks. 
Um, so now we are going to the business. It's not meta.com, it's Facebook yet. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we are now in business manager. I'm gonna refresh and I hope if everything goes good and gets the best demo ever, that segment, as you can see here, it will be appear on Facebook. And now I can start doing boom, boom, boom uh, marketing. Um, because on target doesn't make any sense. Uh, anything that is related to the website doesn't make any sense because this segment is gonna is not going to come back to the site. So let me find the user outside of my own channels. So um, with this, we have covered um, one of the biggest uh, things from the session, which is um, a little bit of an overview of what uh, customer journey analytics is and why it's so important to make everyone, um, not just to look at the data, but also analyze the data. And especially when we have um, that uh, combination of channels, we want to avoid what is in the screen right now. Avoid that the channels are disconnected because what we need to put in the middle for the first time ever, the customer in the middle, also in the data analytics part is the data sets. And of course, put in the middle the customer, right? Um, so that's why uh, thanks to customer journey analytics, we are now able to um, connect the dots, see how the customer is behaving, in terms of behavior, in terms of CRM, in terms of data, in terms of marketing automation, and take decisions from it. But decisions, sometimes it's just calling the uh, tech team and say, change the checkout, we need to change it. Or sometimes the decisions can become, as we were seeing before, segments from actionable insights. And those segments, we are now able to be published within the uh, low experience platform ecosystem and send them to the right destinations, to the right orchestration uh, technologies. So we can then uh, accomplish th those decisions through you know, beautiful marketing and business strategies. So with that, um, I hope you like it. Uh, we presented um, a little bit of everything. So if you want for another session, we can go deeper in each of the features. Uh, but with that, I uh, hope you like it. And Wouter, I hand over to you for the Q&A part. If there is any questions that uh, I can answer or you can answer as well. So yeah, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Victor, and great demo. Um, here you think. Uh, oh, yeah. Good. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I'm good. Good. Um, we've had a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, most of them have been answered uh, already. Um, there was a couple of questions from Praveen. Um, you can see them if you look into the answered section in the QA. Um, so Praveen was asking, uh, if you scroll all the way up, um, when you were showing the breakdown possibility in uh, CGA dashboards, Praveen was asking a question on how to show things in a tabular form. And he also had a follow-up question on, as an example, uh, using PII attributes and events as a column-based uh, approach. What's well, your view on that? Um, okay, so the open one. So is the ones okay? Um, so the ones that are not answering yet, right? So no. we don't <laughs> They are in the answered column. I uh, answered. Ah, okay. it, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, right in there. Uh, so for the let me start with the last one because it's the one I remember. The other ones I remember. <laughs> so you let me know later. But for the um, so. Depending on, on your organization policies, you can for sure use PIA data as well. Uh, but it really depends on where you are in terms of um, your location and as well as your um, or your internal policies. But definitely, um, these um, identities like email are be able to, to be used. Um, so that's the, the last one, Walter. Uh, can you refresh me the two before? Yeah, the first one was about um, uh, showing data in a tabular form in uh, in a project. Um, I'm not sure if that's enough mm -hmm. as a question. Uh, Karvin, if you want, you can provide more uh, yeah. content in the chat. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, we can uh, offline. Karvin is asking to speak, so I will allow Karvin to uh, give me a okay. seconds. There you go. Gavin, you should be able to speak to us now. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Brilliant. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Uta, and thanks, Victor, as well, for this lovely presentation. Good. Right. Uh, when I'm talking about the tabular format, uh, we had a kind of internal use cases in, in our company where we want to share 
okay, uh, uh, the profile first name, last name, email, and whether they have done the, what do you say, the double opt, yes or no, for example, right? Uh, just four columns, you know. Uh, the data is available in the EEP though, but I couldn't use the CJA because there um, you can use just one dimension and then you can break it down. You cannot mm -hmm. have four dimensions for like first name, last name, you know, email, uh, and as well as the block, right? The block is even though a metric. You so, uh, you yeah. I think you can. Uh, so by just dragging and drop another dimension on top of the first dimension would be more granular in terms of, of the data. So you but, might. Yeah. True. So, so first level, I get a first name. I have to, again, break it down. The second level would be last name. Then again, I have to break it down. It's an email. Then again, I have to break it down. It's a metric. So if you say it's a kind of a waterfall or a step, a step kind of visualization is what you have, but it's not completely into the tabular format. Uh, this this was my question. Exactly. Uh, okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, no, that would be more a, no, that wouldn't be possible today in that sense. Nothing, nothing in the roadmap as well? Sir? Nothing in the roadmap? Um, we need to check. Uh, okay, but, so, good. Thanks, Victor. That was my question. But if you have any like use case for that that is interesting, um, maybe it's the opportunity to then share with us not just the tabular uh, visualization way, mm -hmm. but just to really get what you can get from a tabular visualization. So then we can boost that use case to product teams yeah. so they can, if they don't have it so, so, yet, put it yeah. there. Yeah, so I think the use case is quite, because we do have one sandbox for all the European markets, but each European market would like to have the information of the leads generated with simple first name, last name, you know, email, and then uh, double opt-in yes or no, for example, right? Yeah. So I cannot share uh, the, the CJ PDFs because it's a kind of, you know, breakdown functionality of yeah. per lead, not in the tabular format. That is the use case. Yeah. Well, um, I've seen customers using query service uh, to do that. Yeah. So you can, in one variable, join uh, the three um, the three uh, variables. So yes. first name, last name, and the brand name, for example. And you can create a new total variable that joins everything. And then you can do that um, with journey analytics. So if you have the query service license, uh, you are able to, to do that use case today, in that case. Understood. Understood. Can I also concatenate this three columns into one column within the data yeah. set question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, With okay. queries, yeah, because at the end it's SQL or SQL, depends on how you want to do it, say. Um, and then you can do whatever you want on that, on that sense. And then concatenate the data as you want, and then it will be ready for journey analysis to be analyzed. Brilliant. Um, and, and what, the good thing is that is it, it would bring in the historical data, so if you do it today, the historical data will be banned as well. So you don't mm -hmm. lost uh, data on your analytics. Mm -hmm. what, uh, can I, if, I, if, if you allow me, I just have other question on the CJ segments as well, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Brilliant. So uh, Victor, this is a new thing to me that you can also create audience in CJ. I don't know if it's a new component or I just missed it. Thanks for that. But um, again, uh, I have a specific data I have to share with my downstream applications, for example, Salesforce CRM, right? Uh, in the present AEP, if I create the segments, uh, I can only share the profile level attributes, but not the events. Since the CJ, CJ has its own database and the option to create the segments, is it possible that I create a segment and I provide using the CJ API to the downstream applications, both the profile attributes and the event attributes as well? What's the question? Mm, so, so what would be the use case? In, in, so what, what do you want to achieve? Uh, achieve like if I want to update uh, the events related, what is the information back to the Salesforce CRM, right? Okay. Uh, a frequent user browser on my website is uh, giving more information based on the events. Uh, mm -hmm. He's also becoming kind of prospect for me, and I want to send this information back to the Salesforce CRM per se. Okay. So again, it's uh, a use case for query service. Um, okay. <laughs> A query service is, I mean, one of the, the best tools you can have in, in the solution because you can transform events into profile attributes, and then you are able to share those attributes to uh, that CRM system. Okay. So in, in the case of, I don't know, collecting an interest of, an, of a page view or a product in your website, you can say, okay, this uh, event transform into an attribute, and then I will be able to share it. Understood. Okay. Good use case, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs>
So Victor, I think it opens up the question, should we do a follow-up session on query service? Uh, I think that that could be useful as well as a, yeah. a step. Um, for now, all the questions have been answered. Um, so if anybody on the call still has any questions, please post them in the Q&A uh, now. Uh, so let's maybe wait one or two minutes. Uh, I just wanted to highlight again that the recording will be posted in a couple of hours on the YouTube channel. So the people who joined late do it there can find the link in the chat box. Um, I've also shared a link to a tutorial because uh, Victor has shown you a number of components like data views and connections and projects and like, metrics and so on. Um, and if you want to have a bit more information on the details behind that, you can find the step-by-step -step manual um, in the second link I posted in the chat box. Um, uh, if, if the time permits, perhaps the last question would have, that's okay. Of course. Brilliant. Now, um, for the web events and the profile events, right? EC ID is the kind of person ID, right? Uh, for me. How can I, now, if the customer has declined the cookies, how can I make sure, how can I um, show them in the journey? Meaning, uh, we have no other option then to show them as a follow-up or there is another option as well. You know what I mean? So your question is when the user deletes the cookies, if I understand well? It declines the cookies, right? And so analytical information, I cannot to crack. What I have is as part of the essential cookies, just the cookie ID, but there is no tracking happening on top of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, if, if you don't track the user because the user didn't give you the the consent to, to be tracked, then the data doesn't flow to AB and then you cannot um, do anything if you don't have that uh, data. So yeah, there's no predictive way of, of okay. uh, you know, predicting if the user will be uh, moving or not. So that's not something okay. that we do today. Okay, thanks. And any, any, any relation to the first party data, which I think Adobe is also promoting because of the Die down of the third party cookie, for example. Yeah, so um, I think we, we've done a previous um, Tech Academy around first party ID, um, which is yes. basically a first party cookie or first party, whatever you want to put it where. I mean, it can be in a local storage as well. And that ID is used on the tracking. But to get that ID normally, and I'm saying normally because in some companies they don't put the cookie banner as still. Um, but if you have in um, like a cookie banner or consent banner to say, uh, in order to track you, you need to consent, mm -hmm. then at that moment, that first part it will be um, um, thrown to the side and then you can start doing the tracking. So you cannot reinvent the wheel in terms of, if I put a first party cookie, then the user doesn't need to uh, consent. So that's not the way it works. Absolutely. Maybe in your company can be done like that. Depends on your legal department. But in general, to track a user, you need a consent. And once you get the consent, then you need you can put that first part in. Understood. Okay, brilliant. You're welcome. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good. Thank you, Parveen, for your questions. And uh, thank you, Victor, for your time and your preparation for today's session. Um, I see no more questions, so I, I think this is a good moment to stop the call for today. Cool. Um, thanks a lot, and I wish you a great day. Thank Bye -bye. you. Hasta luego. Ciao, ciao.